All right. Hello, welcome. I am Dragon Blitz here doing some commentary for the uh, RNG Manip, first ever of its kind RNG Manip uh, Symphony of the Night run, specifically for the Sega Saturn version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Recently, it has been discovered that by utilizing the um, way in which the Saturn handles its RNG, you can actually manipulate certain drops to happen. And that's very important because the Sega Saturn Any% percent, the fastest version of it used to require, um, well, it still does require, but that, that's its own uh, separate uh, conversation. But essentially, there is a very rare drop that saves multiple minutes um, that before this uh, RNG Manip was discovered, essentially was always random. You just had to get lucky to get the drop. It was about a 2% chance at best. Um, that was the initial calculation that it was a 2% chance to get the drop. But now with a frame perfect uh, input, one frame perfect input is all it takes for you to get the drop essentially guaranteed every single time. And you can retry uh, the setup multiple times and it doesn't cost that much time. Uh, this run happened to get the RNG Manip on the first try. So it ends up being the world record uh, in that regard. There is still uh, ways for this run to be faster by getting lucky, and there is an alternate route that doesn't require the drop, uh, but that that route also loses about 10 seconds. Also, it's important to note, we started as Maria in this category. Maria is a Saturn-only um, character, but what's happening here is I'm doing a save transfer glitch to transfer all of Maria's stats, abilities, relics, items over to a new playthrough with Alucard. So by doing that, what ends up happening here is it loads us in this default room, kind of out of bounds in the middle of nowhere. I then have to go into the relic menu and turn on all the relics that I need for the rest of the run. They're mostly movement relics and a few things that increase my stats. But now I have access to gravity jumps, uh, gravity boots, which give me gravity jumps, which are really high uh, vertical jumps. The soul of bat, which allows me to wing smash. Leap stone for double jumps. Um, and we're going to be utilizing all of this movement options to just get through the game really, really quickly. Another thing that's important to note is that Maria's stats are really high compared to Alucard's. So having 200 health at the start is not normal at level one. Same with the large amount of MP. I think you start with 200 MP as well. So it is a run that gives you all these movement options immediately available to the player, which uh, wouldn't happen otherwise. Here's something that's very funny you can do. You can clip out of bounds using those blue uh, doors in the Saturn version because it gives you... Um, uh, control of the player before um, the door actually closes, and you can buffer a walk into a jump to land on the door as it closes on top of you. And from here, we're uh, actually utilizing the very specific way that the wing smash has been changed between the Saturn version and the PlayStation version. The Saturn version did come out later than the PlayStation version. Uh, and the Saturn version had to change a lot of things to make sure that it worked. Um, for that version, like transformation times are different. Um, the the transformations themselves don't use any like three D objects. Essentially, they were all replaced with sprites. Um, and uh, the wing smash, for whatever reason, is just infinite. So when you do the wing smash input once, it just keeps going forever. Here we have to utilize a combination of spells, uh, the Tetra Spirit, which spawns four spirits that do a lot of damage, and punching with Alucard to defeat Hippogriff quickly. Thankfully, Maria's stats are pretty high, which uh, helps you a lot. Thank you, Necker Dancer, for the sub. And make them your slaves. Hope you're doing well. Forgot to turn off my sub alerts for this uh, recording, but thank you. And then here, oh, got a little unlucky with that winged guard spawn. It's unfortunate. There is some RNG for enemy patterns that can be a little bit tricky to lose a little bit of time. And since the category is so short, you know, taking that damage there is like a huge time loss, all things considered. It's like three seconds. In a category that's, you know, under nine minutes, it's uh, three seconds is a big, big uh, time loss. And here I am almost out of magic. You'd see in the top left hand corner. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting up for a very specific Saturn exclusive out of bounds. They added a load zone in this area, but you can break that load zone by backdashing into it and then holding forward. This puts you in this out of bounds weird area that does have access to the warp that leads to the second castle. So this is a way to skip past Richter, but not only does it skip past Richter, it warps you into this room 
which is a glitched version of the second castle that once you go through this low transition also pushes you out of bounds. And all of this movement together skips about like five-ish rooms worth of movement. And I think it saves like 15 seconds, which is really, really nice. And here is where the RNG manip happens. It's pretty early on in the run. I unfortunately uh, mistakenly take some damage there, which is rough. But the whole point is I need to get into this save room. The game is in a glitch state because of the save transfer glitch, so I have to have the save room do its weird save animation. Then I have to leave the room, then come back, actually save the game. And here's where the RNG manip happens. I do a full reset by holding start and then all of the face buttons. Then I load back into the game. And once you load back into the game, your RNG value starts from zero which is something that doesn't happen in other versions of the game. So because of this, if I do these same exact actions on the same frames after loading into the game, I'll get the same result. And thankfully for us, there is an enemy close by. So by doing a frame perfect wing smash right here, this enemy, if you kill them on the correct frame, will always drop the Masamune Katana. And the Masamune Katana, I'm gonna be equipping right here to showcase just how very, very powerful it is. Before this, we had to use sub weapons like holy water and punches to kill all the enemies. Now we have access to a weapon that does hundreds of damage per hit. And it has a slash special by doing a quarter circle forward and then attack that is fully invincible and slashes like six times doing hundreds of damage per hit, which is really, really nice. Uh, the previous route had, um, had the player killing all these black Panthers for a random chance to get the drop. Um, which also uh, added a lot of level up animations, which was very, very slow. But this gets to skip all of it. This is yet another backdash out of bounds, uh, similar to the one that we did earlier to skip past Richter and get into the second castle. This one gets out of bounds in the chapel. And that out of bounds movement just skips um, an awkward uh, room where you wouldn't be able to move through as quickly. You just get a direct line with some gravity jumps to get uh, to this room. Here, we're gonna have to damage boost off this Minotaur to get up into the left, just barely missing the other Minotaur's axe. Very, very precise movement. Here, utilizing the infinite wing smash, untransforming at the exact spot we need to, getting past these enemies by dive kicking, transferring that dive kick momentum into a bat transformation. And during that bat transformation, uh, I'm fully invincible, so you can skip past enemies by doing that, which is really nice. And uh, the run's almost over. The run is very, very, very fast. Here's pretty much the only time for maybe a, a few seconds that you could uh, squeak in a little bit of a donation or two in a marathon setting because it's just normal movement. And then here is the final glitch of the run, which is going to be Relic Skip. Normally, you need all five uh, Relics of Vlad to get to the end of the game, which, funny enough, Maria does have, so I could do that if I needed to. But instead, they just didn't close the gap uh, between those two screen transitions. So you can just wing smash over through that gap and then just end up past that room anyways. So, and doing it that way saves like five to 10 seconds um, because the animation that it takes for the clock to like open up and then let the player through is very, very slow. So actually going out of your way to wing smash through instead uh, ends up being quite a bit faster. This is our way towards the end of the game. We didn't have to beat all of the prerequisite bosses. Instead, we just skipped to the very end. And then here, I'm doing a very specific boss fight to manipulate Shaft's movement. Backdash into the corner, do one sword slash special, wait, jump slash into another sword special. That kills Shaft. And there's only one boss fight left, which is Dracula. This run is very, very fast. Essentially starting with all of the movement relics at the very beginning and then having access to glitches to skip past all of the required um, major bosses, except for a few, is um, it makes for a very, very fast speed run. And having access to the um, the RNG manipulation is also very, very nice. The only downside about the RNG manipulation is that it does cost about 40 seconds to save the game and then reset. But then you're guaranteeing a first try drop, so. And this run ends up being about... about 15-ish seconds away, 18 seconds away from the um, version of the route that just gets lucky. Um, considering we lost 40 seconds doing the RNG manip, but we're only 18 seconds behind, goes to show that this route is very, very powerful, very fast, pretty much no downtime outside of the, um, the RNG manip. 
But yeah, that's how to beat Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Saturn, any percent as Alucard as fast as possible using an RNG manipulation. It's a really cool run. It's a really fun time. It's very short. Shows off some of the most broken aspects of a version of Symphony of the Night that not a lot of people know much about. Not a lot of people had access to the Saturn version. It was a Japanese exclusive uh, version of the game. Hence why everything is in Japanese, by the way. But yeah, good time. Uh, thanks for letting me showcase this, and I uh, hope you have a good one.